Hello there folks, it's Ilya and you are probably wondering or the ones who follow us on Twitter are wondering what I'm doing here and why I'm shooting this video um, and for those who wonder about what the others are wondering about and, and it's becoming too complicated uh, I will explain now on Twitter we have announced that we are going on a vacation and we won't be doing any videos until a new year uh, because we we became quite exhausted after after Essen we put up a quite a big coverage considering that it's that the channel is our hobby and we have real jobs to do and we have all the other stuff in our lives to do and we're not like we're not doing this for the money but for the pure fun and we became too exhausted and we needed a rest so we decided that but on the other hand I told Alina that I wanted to do a video or even two that I really 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 want to do uh, even though we are on a vacation let's say from not a real job vacation but I mean the uh, the channel vacation but yeah I, I really wanted to do this video because I wanted to share uh, my thoughts on games of 2015. Uh, yeah, the last year, not, not this year. This year's top 10 will be up next year. So we're a year behind, so so do I. But I, I mean, like, we still need to play quite a few games of, of 2016. So, we, so we'll do that list maybe in March or something like that. So, But about 2015, it's a look back at 2015. And at first I thought that I want to do a video about the games that we, about our top 10 of 2015 that we made sort of like a year ago and go through them and um, discuss them sort of and tell you where they are now, are they in our collection, do we like them as much and such. But on the other hand I thought that throughout 2016, throughout this year, we have played very many great games and some of them were from 2015 were published in 2015 and I thought that rather than just talk about this previous list and discuss this one and like uh, redo like I mean uh, go through that previous list I will redo the whole list and do a new top 10 of 2015 but I still wanted to name this video a look back um, because just new top 10 of 2015 what it's I let's say I'm, I'm not gonna discuss it too much right now all right this intro is becoming quite long so maybe we'll just go to this new list and but one, one more thing sorry I want to tell you that there might be some things that you are will not agree with and that's fine Put it in the comments below. I want to see discussion. That's that's that would be great. I'm I'm always up for for some discussion. So, but without further ado, let's go to my new top ten of 2015. Let's go. So number ten is a game, which is a card game. It's a two-player game, and it's Seven Wonders Duel. Seven Wonders Duel is a sister, let's say, or brother of, of uh, its bigger game, Seven Wonders, uh, which I tried but didn't like as much. And Seven Wonders Duel is a great uh, sort of implementation or two-player variant, let's say, two-player game of this Seven Wonders, where you draft cards from the center, from this pyramid or whatever the shapes are, and it's so fast, you just need to collect a few symbols, resources, and then you can build some wonders that will give you extra action or more gold. And you're trying to create a combination where you get this card in order to get the other card in order to get the other card. And the coolest part is that it has three winning conditions. You have um, the war condition, you have the science condition, and then just the points at the end of the game. And I like this tension because if you abandon one of these winning conditions, let's say you abandon the science winning condition and the other player is grabbing all these cards, you can win in an instant. So you sometimes you need to decide against uh, grabbing a card which will give you quite a lot of points and grab the science card instead. 
and the same with is with the war and i like that and it's it's a it's it's a tense game in let's say 30 minutes and i like it really much it just gives this really cool uh, two player experience if you like this back and forth it's it's not like a backstabbing or a cutthroat game but it's certainly is the game where you have confrontation and you feel that so that's on this duel number 10 number 9 is a game about economy and I usually do not like uh, economic games but this one is uh, is something really cool that's stockpile at first when I looked at the stockpile it was it looked so boring for me and money and whatever the stock market ah but as we got this game we tried this game it's really cool it's it's down my alley it's it's simple you're just trying to outguess the stock market and outsmart other opponents in order to get the most money. And there's that speculation, that outguessing makes this game really good. And we have the expansion, which we got later from the Kickstarter. Because we already we played the game, then we had the Kickstarter and we let's say we uh, we played the expansion as well. And I really like these uh, forecast dice now. Instead of just a fixed, let's say, changes of, of, of the stock, you have sort of a random changes of the stock. But it means like, you know, you still know them in advance, but um, they are different each round, which is really, really cool. And, and the stocks are more sort of unpredictable. It feels more unpredictable, which makes a more tense game. And I, and I like the bonds. The bonds are simple, few, like, Small things that you buy bonds each round, but at the end you will get the money for them. But during the game you also get the money, and that's that's their basically purpose if you get them early on. And you can build a strategy on them, you can build a strategy on something else, and there are many cool special powers that you have. Like each each uh, player will get the character. So, really cool game. Even, like, I didn't like the economic games at all, and stock market isn't my thing, but this one is an uh, exception. This one is really cool, that stockpile, with, of course, um, continuing corruptions uh, expansion. Now, number eight, and it might be a, it might be a small stretch, because uh, this game is a, this entry is a new edition of an older game, and that's called Catacombs. But on my list, it's the third edition. Uh, I haven't played the old Catacombs, and when I looked at the old Catacombs, it looked um, like garbage, sorry, really but this new catacombs has Quanche Mori art uh, and it looks much nicer. It looks greater. I don't know. It's just, it looks awesome compared to the old edition. And I think for me, it's, it's like a whole new game. That's why I put it on this list. And the catacombs is a flicking game with dungeon crawl where there is one overlord and uh, heroes. And we like to play with Alina as a... It, Play it as a two-player game where I control all the heroes. She, she doesn't like to control many characters at, at once, but she controls the Overlord and she likes to play that. And so we like. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I really like how how it evolves. You go through the dungeons, but it's all about flicking. And if you will miss or not, and it's still fun. And if you lose, it's still fun. If you'll miss or something like that. So, and it has this uh, fantasy world. And you have these magical missiles and fireballs and skeletons and archers or whatever and poison. And it's a really thematic uh, flicking game, in my opinion, where you have lots of things to do. And, and it's a big game. And that, that was my surprise. It's still a flicking game. I was not really looking into any flicking games and playing any flicking games. But wow, what a surprise for me. That's Catacombs, the third edition. Now, number seven is another two-player game, uh, which came out in 2015, and I think it's a little bit, maybe, maybe a little bit underrated game. And it's from one of my favorite designers, uh, Bruno Catala, and the other designer is Bruno Feduti, which, who is a really cool designer as well. And it's Raptor. And Raptor is a two-player game when one player plays scientists, the other player plays... Um, Mama Raptor and her babies, you want your babies to escape as Mama Raptor and scientists want to 
capture uh, mama raptor and her babies. And that's basically it. And you have cards from 1 to 9. You have some uh, abilities on the cards. And you basically play a card each turn, reveal it. Whoever has the highest number uh, will um, play the... Um, oh, sorry, uh, yeah. Whoever has, I think, the lowest number will play the action. And the highest number will get the difference in actions. So, uh, but whatever. The thing is that it's a game about outgazing. It's a game about, about theme as well. It's a really cool theme. You feel that. You feel like you want to capture Mama Raptor. And as Mama Raptor, you feel like you are fighting against the scientists. And there's a board that... But it's not this big, let's say, footprint of a game on a table. And it has the tension. And it's all about outguessing. It's, it's like outguessing in, in a massive... Like, as a massive sun, you know. It's, it's, it's just the whole game there. But on the other hand, you have this cool, it's from, it's from Matagot, you have this cool uh, miniatures, they are all different shaped. And it just looks great. It's, it's, it's Vincent de Trey, uh, the artwork of Vincent de Trey. So I, I just cannot recommend it enough. It's a really cool two player game. Yes, it's a cutthroat game, but it, like, I mean, like, it's confronta really confrontational game, but two player games should be confrontational games. Maybe for some not, you know, you know, you want to play with your wife or you want to play with a husband who doesn't like confrontation games. Okay, you can find the other game, you can find the Euro game, which you can play as a two-player game and such. But if, if it's a pure two-player game, I want to see a confrontational game. Otherwise, it's not a two-player game. Otherwise, it's just a solitaire multiplayer game that we play together, sort of, you know. So, Raptor, number seven. Number six is a game which has this storytelling element in it, um, but on the other hand, it's a worker placement game, and it's Ryan Lockett's Above and Below, which has a really cool art from Ryan Lockett, really cool game from Ryan Lockett, and <laughs> really cool production from Ryan Lockett. No, the thing, the thing is that this game has this story element where you uh, go exploring as an action, you, you send your workers to explore, and then you roll dice and see what page you will open or what whatever story you will open. The other player will read it out for you and you will make a decision. The stories are simple. The decisions are rather simple, but it's still it's it's one of the most popular actions that you can make and uh, that that you will make uh, in a game and everyone will make in a game in this game. So it's just so fun to go exploring. But if if you I think if you will take away this exploring aspect, the game becomes even quite. It becomes okay, sort of a usual worker placement game. But I really like that. I really like how when, when you explore, you go exploring the caves which are underneath. You, you're building the village up and then you're trying to explore the caves underneath. And after you have explored successfully, you will get this cave card. And now it's like a room where you can put a building in, like the cave building, the uh, underworld buildings which is really cool. So you have two rows uh, of buildings and you collect resources and you do that usual the worker placement stuff to get the most points at the end of the game. But I really like the whole concept uh, and the storytelling element of above and below. So my number five is a social game and usually they you, you won't see them on, on my list usually because I'm not into this Whatever, I'm not into Dixit or something like that because I, I don't really like Dixit and the other social games and party games. But code names, code names, and you can put code names pictures in it. So whatever my mood is, I, I can play either code names or code names pictures. But I fell in love with with the original code names at first, which came out in 2015. So code names is all about just words. You're in teams. One is uh, the spy master, I think it was called spy master. The other are teammates. You are giving out clues. Your teammates are trying to guess what are your words in that grid of words. And you have basically uh, a clue that you can give is one word and number. Word corresponding to like that you need, like corresponding to, to, to the words on the table that you are referring to. And the number corresponds to how many words you are referring to. And that's really easy. You just say banana three and, 
and then there is like um, let's say um, there is f the name fruits or say the word fruits uh, there is the name monkey or or there's the name or whatever the, the the else is I know apple apple is also fruit which is banana is a fruit okay I guess I guessed it right or wrong and it's a really fast game and you want to change teams and then one somebody becomes a spy master the other one goes into other team or something like that and you it's it's a really cool game to play between bigger games as well Codenames is such a blast every time we we get it out it's it's an awesome game it's a social deduction game as uh, so deduction it's a social game it's a party game but it's a thinky party game i like that it's not a loud party game it can be loud after the game where you're like wow i told you that it's banana free how could you not guess this right word no. i know but uh, so let's go to our, uh, our mine number four which is a small stretch as well but um this game is a wonderful re-implementation of the older edition, and that's Mission Red Planet. And I know it came out earlier as well as, a, as an old edition, but the old edition looks bland, and I think they changed quite a few things. And for me, this new Mission Red Planet, the second edition of 2015, is like a new game. And it's Bruno Cotella, Bruno Faduti as well. Uh, the same with the Raptor, and it's really cool. The same, outguessing. It's all about outguessing. You try, and the, you, you have this Mars and different locations on Mars. You are sending astronauts on Mars in order to have this every majority in, so you can collect these crystals, which are points at the end of the game. Cool. Now, uh, you uh, must send these astronauts, first of all, you, you must put them on the ships. And for that, you have these cards. These are basically rolls from uh, one to... Eight, uh, let me, I don't remember the, the exact number of rolls, but basically these rolls are really simple. You either like put one instrument on ship and do whatever, but some of them are nasty. You can blow up the other ship uh, and then you can kill one of the astronauts on, on Mars or whatever from the moon, something like that. So, um, and it's all about outguessing because the uh, bigger number means that you're going early in the turn but sometimes bigger numbers don't give you such a cool action and the smaller numbers give you a really cool action but that can also mean that if you're playing four play game and you put a number one it's probably that you will go last thus the spaces in the ships will fill up and you don't have a ship to send it to Mars or whatever so it's a really cool out guessing game one of the best out there i i just love this game and production quality and such it's it's an awesome game mission red planet number f uh, sorry number three number three is a game which has a really big really cool production as well and at first we thought that we won't like it at all because it it's miniatures it's big it's it looks very trashy but it's blood rage and blood rage is a hybrid game Yes, it's an area control game. Yes, it's confrontational. But whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner of the game. Which means that it's not all about just whoever eliminates anyone first or whatever. Uh, first, you were, I, li I like how uh, it, it, it's played in three eras. You have uh, three decks of cards and you draft uh, the first deck of cards, you draft the second and then the third deck of cards. And, um, and these are like clan upgrades or, or new monsters or anything else or warrior upgrades and then you put these miniatures out and monsters and your warriors and leaders and such and try to fight for locations or just control them and such and get, uh, get the upgrades which are like the, the bigger upgrades so if like some upgrades, so you, you can have more miniatures on a board, you can have more action points that you can spend, spend each turn and such. So I really like that. And I like how the first deck, when we played for the first time, we were like, oh, really cool cards. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. When we took the second deck, it was like, wow, these are really cool cards, you know? And then we went to the third deck and it was like, wow, these are awesome cards, you know? Each time it's a progression, you go further and further and further and you get better and better and better cards. And it feels like a progression 
and then you, like you, you can fight it to the end and although if you make some really bad mistakes one our last game was like that i made really bad mistakes i didn't really pay attention and i came like i played really badly i was i was stuck i couldn't get anything anymore because i played really badly not because the game is bad but blood rage which we thought we won't like yeah it's expensive but we got it as a uh, secret Santa Christmas present. Um, we still, we, we love it. We, we just love it. It's a really cool game. And I would recommend it to anyone who, who um, doesn't like just the dry Euro games or doesn't like Marathon games and wants something in, in between. That's, that's a game for him. Although it's kind of a war game still. And number two is a game that is a story that is a cinema a, a, a movie uh, that is a book it's just it's just hard to explain it's time stories uh, it's an RPG uh, but you're going uh, through the story you're going through different locations and you're discovering new things and you have puzzles um, but but this the, but this story you're going through and the puzzles that you're putting together in your head as well, it's and like it's sort of a deduction thing as well there, and everything blends together in a really cool film, in a really cool book that you are like sort of going through. But it's still the, the gameplay itself is like there are basically skill checks, and you're rolling dice and and do, doing some skill checks, but to guess where to go and what to trust or, or who to trust or who to, to not trust and such. It's really cool how they made it. There are so many like cool choices, at least in the first two. But new scenarios are coming up. I know you can play the scenario only one time and that's it. But the experience and the fun you get out of just one scenario. It's already so big that I just love this game. I, I adore this game. It's, it's a great game. That's Time Stories. And now, my number one. My number one is sort of a stretch as well now. It's, an all, it's also a new edition of the older game. It's a deluxe edition of the older game. And that's called Empire's Age of Discovery. The older game was called Age of Discovery 3rd or whatever, 3. And I had the old edition as well, um, but eventually I got the new one. It's, it's a deluxe. It has a great component upgrade. Uh, it has the builder expansion in it already because it was really hard to get the builder expansion separately for the older edition. And for me, it feels like a new game, like a 2015 game. And you had this uh, you had some extra promos and characters, uh, not the character, but uh, nation sheets and such, and extra miniatures of different colors. I, it's just so cool, um, and it's a big box. It's an expensive box, but the game in it is so cool. It's I call it hybrid as well because it has a really strong theme. I know it's colonization and such, yeah, but I'm fine. It's 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 just a game, you know. And it's a really, like, I, it's really a thematic game, and I wanted to say. And it's a worker placement game, which I, I, the mechanic I really like. And it has so many cool choices, and it has the area control, and there is a majority in it as well. And whoever has the most points in the end of the game is the winner, so it's not like whoever eliminates any, anybody, you know. And it has so many different strategies and choices to go through. And just the whole experience that you go through while you're playing this game is so big that it's my number one of 2015, the new edition of, uh, of a, what is basically called now Empire City Discovery. And it's my number two game of all time. And that tells you about something. If you, get it, if you, if you can get it somewhere cheaper than its uh, original price, there will be a big sale of that because I got it like that. I got it... Uh, for I think $67 instead of $120. So that's a big sale there. And cool stuff thing. But for our friend Kyle, so I'm really thankful for him to him. Uh, but yeah, if you can get this game, get this game. It's an awesome game. The workers have different powers. 
which I really like, not like a usual worker placement game where all workers are the same and you do the stuff by sending them somewhere, but at first you're basically planning the whole thing, you're sending out workers and they can have different abilities based on where you're sending them as well. And then you will resolve all the actions. Like in lots of what they were, you are, I've, was it lots of what they were, you at first you're putting out the meeples and then you're resolving everything together. But whatever, it's, it's an awesome game, it's it's great game, it's mind-blowing. So this is my new top 10 of 2015. Uh, and of course, if you have any comments, and I know this video ran a little bit too long, but I really wanted to talk about all these game, games. Um, if, if you have any questions, if you have any comments about uh, these um, games, put them in, in YouTube under the, the comments section, or we have our guild, where for the views, you can find the link to our guilds in the description below. You can find a link to the old top 10 of 2015 in, in the description below. And you can also send us an email if you want to ask something else and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel from New Year. We will have more videos. We still have quite a few review copies that we need to go through. And we'll have new reviews and really cool games to talk about. And of course, um, we're still uh, doing that. I'm not, I'm not sure how it will end up, but we will definitely have a, uh, we'll, we'll be in a January Splendor episode where we will have uh, Würfel Awards or Blender Awards, what you call that we made last year in the Borg and Blender. But we'll have these awards as well. So really cool things coming in New Year. I hope you can wait till then. I really hope. And thank you so much for watching. And we see you then next time. Bye-bye.